Good brothers and sisters, comrades, I want to welcome you to another edition of Uhuru Congo, where we want to deal with the critical questions uh, concerning uh, our people in the Congo, concerning our struggle in the Congo. And right now, uh, this struggle is immediately revolving around the December uh, 30th election uh, that was hard, uh, highly contested, and and uh, highly uh, anticipated uh, that just happened in Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, where uh, the presidential election uh, took place. And uh, even though we can say that the election was hard fought and hard uh, and highly anticipated, we also have to say that was, it was an election like almost every election that we see happening with African people around the world occurred without the benefit of uh, the participation of the African working class uh, uh, owned party. And so thousands of people lined up all over Congo to try to participate in this election, but it was an election that uh, represented a contest between different sectors of the neo-colonial petty bourgeoisie. Whoever won that election, uh, the outcome would simply be that neo-colonialism would, uh, would uh, be uh, the governing uh, entity uh, in Congo, because the African People's Socialist Party, uh, the African Socialist International, has not yet consolidated itself in Congo to the extent that if there were going to be an election, the African working class would have its own voice, its own agenda uh, that could be fought for and organized around. So I want to say that first of all. So there's a lot of controversy around that election that occurred on, on December 30th. Uh, the election itself was something like uh, two years uh, behind schedule because the uh, president at the time, uh, 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 Joseph Kabila, had uh, uh, maneuvered and tried to uh, formally remain in power uh, through changing the Constitution and the opposition of the masses of the people in Congo who hated uh, Kabila, who hated uh, Kabila's rule, who hated the collaboration that the Kabila regime has uh, with the regime of uh, uh, Museveni uh, in, 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 uh, in uh, 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 Uganda and uh, Kagame uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Rwanda uh, who are terrorizing, murdering our people, stealing resources there. Uh, people uh, hated that regime, hated the regime of Joseph Kabila and him, his attempt to uh, reestablish, uh, uh, to maintain, to change the constitution so that he could be in, in uh, legally uh, uh, continuing office was something that was frustrated by uh, the people uh, uh, engaged in massive kinds of protests, again without the benefit of their own party. Uh, ultimately, the leadership of the uh, resistance seems to have come from the Catholic Church, uh, which uh, is not a revolutionary organization. But let me tell you that one of the issues for the bourgeoisie, for the white ruling class, for imperialism in general, I'm not just talking about the lackeys uh, in Congo or any neo-colonial state, is that uh, the, the, the way that the neo-colonial puppets have conducted themselves, uh, they have uh, established really narrow political bases within narrow sectors of the, of the petty bourgeoisie and closing the masses out. And so what has happened too often is that the petty bourgeoisie would initiate these fights with each other. The election is supposed to be it, but when the, when the sector of the petty bourgeoisie uh, will not allow other sectors of the petty bourgeoisie to participate, then the, the bourgeoisie, the petty bourgeoisie that's left out, the neo-colonial would-be uh, puppets that are left out begin to mobilize people to help uh, destabilize the situation. That's not good for white power imperialism. So they, act, they move often through their own institutions, uh, sometimes which uh, give, have the appearance of being our institutions, to try and stabilize the situation so that they can uh, fix it to, so that the elections uh, become nonviolent, the uh, contest between who is going to represent white power. Uh, and uh, they try to force it so that the petty bourgeois neo-colonial forces would open up the part participation for all of the petty bourgeoisie uh, to have an equal opportunity to come to power uh, as long as they represent neo-colonialism. And that's one of the frustrating things. So they've had masses of people, African people, come out. The other thing I think is really important, and that blocked uh, the ability of Joseph Kabila to change the Constitution so that he could uh, legally uh, extend uh, his rule. And of course, uh, people saw him trying to, after that was frustrated, after he could not change the Constitution, he tried to extend his rule uh, through uh, placing severe limitations on the ability of other sectors of the petty bourgeoisie, 
other sectors of the middle class to contest uh, for control uh, of the neocolonial state uh, in Congo. And uh, he did everything he could uh, 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 to do that. And that has contributed to the, the controversy that we're looking at in Congo uh, today. I think that the other thing that we must understand about this is that uh, the, the fact is that Africans in Congo are part of the whole uh, African uh, uh, situation, that we have not had power uh, over our lives uh, forever. There has been no uh, free elections. There has been no uh, independent African uh, uh, activity, political activity in Congo. And that uh, the genesis of this contradiction, the immediate genesis, uh, not counting the slavery, the attack on Africa that had begun to uh, rob Africa of, of, of our people, our workers, uh, our people who uh, would, be, uh, would be the people uh, making uh, government happen, making science happen, making art and culture happen, uh, the attack on Africa that, uh, that uh, included what they call the slave trade, uh, that helped to build the wealth of Europe and build the wealth of Belgium, uh, which was 80 times smaller uh, than Congo, uh, yet uh, uh, to become the possessor of Congo, the, the colonial possessor uh, of Congo, I think it's important to say uh, that uh, the immediate uh, uh, post-slavery uh, genesis of this election that we're talking about now was 1884 and 85, which happened uh, in Berlin, Germany, where white people sat around a table and carved up Africa and gave Congo uh, to the Belgium. They gave Congo, gave our Congo to Belgium, gave our Congo to white people in Belgium. And this uh, gift uh, to Belgium by the other lords of white power, by the other imperialist uh, colonizer, is what has developed Belgium, has made Belgium a rich, uh, a comfortable place uh, to live uh, at the expense of Africans in Congo who are suffering mightily and have no dem democracy, no democratic rights at all there, uh, but the Belgians uh, enjoy what they call democracy and, and and democratic rights as a consequence of being able to live comfortably without the s uh, severe contradictions that would happen if they had to be fighting uh, uh, like animals uh, over, uh, over resources. They don't have to do that. They haven't had to do that. So uh, uh, Belgium was given a gift of Congo uh, uh, by other imperialist powers, and, and uh, they robbed Congo of everything, as the other colonizers were, the British were robbing us in what came to be known as a nigger area. Uh, they were robbing us in Ghana. They were robbing us all over, as they were robbing people in India, et cetera, et cetera. This is the foundation of the struggle that we're involved in today. And in 1960, uh, as a consequence of the growing resistance of the people, uh, not only in Congo, but it was happening in Rwanda and, and all over the African continent, uh, the Belgians uh, uh, wanted to put on a face, uh, a show of, of uh, some kind of democracy and, and uh, participating in the ending of uh, Belgium uh, outright uh, open domination. And they held an election uh, that they assumed uh, one of a, a number of, uh, of uh, neo-colonial petty bourgeois forces would, uh, would win. And it didn't happen. Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba won that election. And it uh, threw everything uh, out of uh, kilter for the imperialists. And of course, uh, within a matter of months, they had overthrown and murdered uh, Patrice Lumumba. I think something like three months is all it took uh, uh, for them to, uh, to murder uh, Lumumba. In fact, January, January 17th was the 58th anniversary of the murder of Patrice Lumumba by the Belgians, the United States, and the French colonizers. Uh, and now, uh, uh, there hasn't been any kind of elections. Everything that called itself an election since that time, of course, has been a farce. Everyone who has run for office since that time, uh, since the defeat, since the murder of Lumumba, since the defeat of the resistance that was led by uh, 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 Pierre uh, Mulele and, and other forces in Congo, um, there has been nothing that could even be considered approximating a fair uh, election. And that is the same thing that just happened on December 30th. It was not a fair election. It was a situation where Africa continues to be carved up, uh, where the African Revolution cannot con uh, appropriately represent itself in the real world because uh, 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 Lumumba was working with Nkrumah and working with other forces to, to build a united Africa uh, that would give African people ourselves control of our resources and our political destiny. Uh, and so now, uh, on, on, on uh, December 30th, 
uh, this, this phony election that uh, the white power forced the uh, Joseph Kabila to conduct. Uh, uh, again, it did not go the way that they wanted it to go, uh, but uh, that's what we're looking at, the outcome, uh, where uh, all evidence is that another neo-colonial force uh, should have won the election, and certainly that was the one that the masses of African people in Congo supported. But Kabila, again, intending to rule, uh, uh, to extend his rule, uh, this time uses uh, somebody else uh, uh, and confers uh, uh, the victory uh, to uh, someone who would work uh, for him as opposed to the masses of our people in, Belgium, in, in Congo. And of course, that's the way it's going to be until the African working class has possession of the African People's Socialist Party uh, right there uh, in Congo itself. So I wanted to say those things, and I've, I think I have may have gone a little over uh, my time, uh, but I want to say those things. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, I don't, Comrade uh, Luizzi uh, uh, can go ahead and make uh, some some comments, and then we'll move to a video that we have to show everybody. Uhuru Luizzi. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for this wonderful uh, overview. And uh, I hope uh, people who are uh, listening uh, the video will uh, have uh, paid attention to the particularly uh, the history because uh, we're not looking at a new phenomenon. We're looking at a old phenomenon, but it has uh, accumulated uh, contradictions uh, to the point that now uh, the, uh, you will say the situation uh, is uh, definitely uh, right uh, for a new approach, for a new solution. Uh, the uh, government in the place in imperialism uh, since the uh, 1960 uh, now uh, they're running against uh, the wall basically uh, when I say they're running against the wall is one uh, one thing uh, to have watched the, uh, uh, the revolution and to have imposed a new colonial solution uh, but to have a new, co uh, new colonial solution that uh, is not working anymore uh, that's something else uh, that situation basically uh, we have uh, in the Congo. It has been uh, uh, obvious to Kabila from uh, January 2016 that uh, he would not be able to do uh, what uh, Kagame and the Museveni have done in Uganda and, uh, and uh, Rwanda and also what uh, Sashu and Gisu have done in the Congo Brazzaville. These are the three presidents who have been able to change the constitution and extend the new colonial rule. And uh, in January, between the 19th and the 21st of January 2015, there was an uprising uh, in Kinshasa. The uh, what some people refer to urban work, so the poor working class uh, in Kinshasa engaged in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, the police, threw stones, and uh, for three days, the police couldn't control uh, 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 those uh, workers. Uh, they say there is no way, there is no way Kabila is going to change the constitution. And uh, that for the first time, we saw Kabila's uh, government uh, retreating. That's the first time that he retreated, that he could not uh, go on. And uh, of course, subsequently, we discovered uh, not too far uh, from the, uh, this, um, the district of Kinshasa, known as Malubu, is uh, at the outskirts of uh, Kinshasa. Uh, when you're about to leave Kinshasa, you go to the province. So it's called Malubu. And uh, that's where they discovered that the first mass grave in Kinshasa since Kabila regime came to power. Hundreds and hundreds of bodies uh, found there. And the people concluded quickly the new way works. This was. These were the victims or the martyrs of the January 2015. Uh, so if today Kabila was able to, uh, to make that concession, because that uh, uprising uh, you know, remained with in the brains of uh, the ruling class, of the, of the African people themselves there, that uh, they will not, uh, if Kabila does not election, then the people say it's their right to initiate the Article 64 is a bourgeois constitution, uh, article from the bourgeois constitution that says anyone who uh, steals election or maintains itself uh, uh, in power 
and we feel like the will of the people that the people have the right to do anything to you uh, to deal with that person. And that became the slogan on the street. They're just waiting uh, for the 30th of December. If there are no elections, then it's Article 64. And that's everywhere. You speak to, to, the, to the workers in the South and North and the East, they say, we're just waiting for that date. Then it's going to be Article 64. They're going uh, to take things in their own hand. So you can't <laughs> talk about anything like that. And uh, so I was forced to organize these elections. But they organize it not to concede power, <laughs> to keep power. And the strategy to keep power was, and they've been working on it uh, since uh, the, uh, the uprising uh, in 2015, that uh, if they can get to security and his organization, which is known as the UDPS, the UDPS was created uh, to manage uh, position to Mobutu, so an organization that will be opposed to Mobutu, but that will not be opposed to neo-colonialism, to imperialism, to white power. Uh, and, and that's how Egypt uh, was built, and then rapidly they get support from uh, all the uh, African people in Brazil and Congo, and it became a very popular organization. So if Joseph Kabila, who has become so unpopular, if he can win uh, uh, the support of Egypt, if he can make a deal for Egypt, then he can keep power. And the deal manifests itself first. We had uh, someone called uh, Sami Badibama. He was a key member of the UDPS. And uh, he deserted uh, UDPS to become a prime minister of uh, Kabila some uh, two years ago. And that was a shock. But that was part of the process to get UDPS, to prepare the UDPS that you're going to make a deal with Joseph uh, Kabila. And uh, a year later, another key member of the inner circle of uh, university leadership, his name is Chibala, he became a prime minister. So he replaced the previous one, uh, 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 Badi, uh, Sami Badiba. So basically, what I'm saying, in two years, we have seen Kabila appointing two senior members of the university leadership as Prime Minister in succession in two years. So when the, uh, it became clear that uh, Felix Sekedi in, uh, in November, I think it was, that he will now go with uh, the alliance of the African people already against Joseph Kabila just for electoral purposes in Geneva. That's when he created Namuka. That's where Martin Fayou became as the leader of the uh, opposition uh, for electoral purposes to go against uh, Joseph Kabila's uh, group, which is known as the FCC. It became clear that Chisekedi is going to be working with uh, Joseph Kabila because the ally of Joseph of, of uh, Chisekedi is a man called Gamere. Gamere is a man of all uh, trickery. He's a man of uh, all deals in support of the Kabila. So, I'm not saying these, uh, these two things, basically. The two prime ministers from Unibes in the last two years in succession, <coughs> plus the uh, withdrawal of Felix Tisekedi from the deal that he made with the uh, rest of the African people who were here against Kabila 24 hours after signing the contract and preferring to be with Vital Kamere. These are two signs that Felix Tisekedi is going to make a deal. Or has, has already made deal. And uh, some of the analysts already pointed out that the real ally uh, of Sir Kabila is in the opposition, and that was very difficult. So that's the first part. The second part, of course, we spoke about it before. The uh, election results came out out of, out, out of chaotic uh, election, and that took a long time before uh, they announced uh, the result. They postponed it for four days. They announced it. 3 a.m. Uh, in the morning, and uh, the winner was Isekedi, and subsequent to that, the Catholic Church immediately said the results are not correct, because they have 14 million, uh, basically, uh, votes uh, processed you know, through uh, uh, the uh, survey that they did, and the Isekedis on this side, they have uh, access to 3 million, 3 million, had to say that they won. 
And the Catholic Church, yes, if you base your information on three million of uh, of data of voters, of course you won. But you three million is increased in the fourteen millions we have. And uh, if you look at it, you didn't win. And uh, the Financial Times, the leading uh, Buddha newspaper in Europe, you know, uh, on its front page, it's unusual. Uh, they published the article that uh, inform, uh, that the data was leaked out out of uh, electoral commission clearly showed uh, Martin Fayulu was the winner. And uh, if you compare the result from the leak and, uh, that came from the electoral commission itself and the result uh, shared uh, with the uh, or shared with the rest of the world basically by the Catholic Church, they converged that uh, it was Martin Fayulu who won. So it became difficult for Kabila to uh, maintain uh, his results. So they have to postpone basically the the, uh, the consolidation of uh, publication of proclamation of the results. In the meantime, uh, Martin Fayulu also introduced a campaign. Uh, that's why basically they have to go to the constitutional court, which in the U.S. will be probably the Supreme Court. And uh, the declaration was announced uh, early in the morning uh, today. But before they announced it, the AU basically said to not announce it, suspend it, until the delegates of the AU arrive in the convoy in Uh And uh, of course, the government didn't wait for that, for the delegates, which include Paul Kagame and Ramaphosa, to be landing in Kinshasa tomorrow, but they announced the result early this morning. And that's where we are. Uh, uh, the city basically has been proclaimed uh, as the uh, president uh, of, of Congo. Now, in terms of uh, how people should basically uh, understand uh, the situation uh, in the Congo today. Uh, first of all, we just want to make a, a point that uh, there is an agreement between the, uh, the sector of the African people in the Congo and uh, the sector, of course, of the African people in Africa, particularly South Africa, Zimbabwe, Rwanda. Uganda, Angola, that they will also be part of the looting in the Congo. So you have the general imperialists, the white power uh, uh, we're familiar with, uh, the United States, the Belgium, Germany, the France, all of them are there. You have the Chinese, they are there, the Indians are there, the Brazilians are there. But you also have a sector of active people who I see. We also have a stake in the looting, in the plastic life, in the Congo itself. So that all these come to play when it comes to who is the winner of the election. Ramaphosa, from, Zoo, from Mandela, Beki, Ramaphosa, uh, passing by Zuma, they all have injuries in the Congo. Zuma family is there. Babo Beki, uh, under Mandela, they, are, they are also had uh, 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 interest uh, uh, in there. Uh, Angola has interest there in oil. South Africa is the mine uh, in uh, electricity uh, because electricity is supplied to South Africa uh, 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 from Congo and there is a bigger project even that will supply more electricity to South Africa. But all these, let's not pay attention to what the people should get out of it. It's just to satisfy the interest of the of the settler who is in South Africa. Zimbabwe government through Mugabe and his generals, they were given a mine as a, as a, a condition uh, for them to support uh, the, the, the uh, regime of, uh, of Joseph Kabila. So they have interest uh, to maintain uh, such a score. You already know uh, about Rwanda, um, culture and things like that are not sold to Congo, they're sold to Rwanda and then the rest of the world. And the part of Eastern Congo, the gold and the trade, they have to go through uh, Museveni and his colony. So these, all these guys are uh, post Uh Whoever comes to power in the Congo must be still also satisfy uh, their interests. And then you have the competition between uh, China and uh, Europe and uh, the United States. And uh, it seems clear that the 
U.S. and the Belgium uh, that is supporting uh, Moïse Katoumbe. And Moïse Katoumbe's candidate is Martin Fayou. On the other hand, you have Kabila and uh, his group. Uh, they need China and to be there so he can guarantee, he can create a balance for them or protection for them against uh, the U.S. and the Belgium and the British who put them in power in the first place. You know, and uh, when we talk about the meeting that took place in Geneva uh, to choose the, uh, the uh, common candidate for the position, he was sponsored by the British guy, Alan Boss, who used to run the UN uh, in the Congo. So you have these two uh, aspects. So when the EU, uh, the Belgian, the French, all these, they're saying uh, the election will not fail. That's not me that support uh, 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 the people. Or the don't. They just position themselves uh, to protect their their interests. It doesn't really even mean uh, they are uh, against self capital as such. They just, you know, trying to protect their own interests, and they know Kabila has the support of China and the Russian in the UN. They will not su uh, support anything against uh, China, and there is a basis for that. China needs a lot of material, copper, you name it, but copper. I know people are familiar with content or more copper, but cobalt, the C O B E L T, that is um, uh, what is needed for the so called green energy, but it's also needed for everything military. The engine, uh, the space uh, craft, all of these things, they need cobalt. And uh, most than 60% of it is a. Uh, is, uh, 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 in the Congo, and this is a strategic material that the UN, the United States, consider as a national security. And I guess China also, without saying it, might consider cover also as something of a, of a national security. And uh, if I may add one more thing, is that uh, why do people hate the uh, so much and his regime? You have two elements here to consider. Uh, first is the people. The people have become aware that neocolonialism in the Congo is being done with mass timid. And that the, the white power does not report. Even the reports, they were putting in a way, it's casual. Just in December, the uh, Human Rights Watch published the killing that took place in the Yumbi, which is along the Congo River uh, in the south. 900 people were killed. Four villages were burned. This is just a month before the election. In fact, the people from that uh, district were died from voting. They did not vote. And uh, they, don't, they don't even know how many people died because some people drowned. Some people were burned. Some people fled. So from the bodies identified, that's some 900. This is just in one place. And also, the new communism in the Congo means that uh, in eastern uh, Congo, Iran, Benin, uh, Putembo district, for reason, that's where also one million, one million people were not allowed to go. That's where they kill people every week. And we all know it. Every week, you get a uh, first release, yes, they kill and they kill 15, and they do it in the most vicious way. And uh, June 2016, uh, August 2016, and December, 2017, you had mass killing in the Kansai province. That's where millions were forced to flee. And uh, as a result of that, you have more than 4 million uh, displaced people just in the Congo itself, uh, uh, exposed to cholera, uh, you name it. And you have the UN there with uh, the Ebola and cholera, you name it. All these uh, uh, things there to, to impose specific. Uh, people. So what I'm saying basically, you have uh, neocolonialism that is accompanied on a mass killing and a mass rape uh, that's happening uh, uh, all the time there. And that this is something that informs the consciousness, the consciousness of the people. People don't want to these mass killings. People are fed up of this mass rape that's been taking place uh, 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 in a Kasai province in the east. Uh, also in the Congo, and uh, also it seems like they have opened a new front now in the southwest, where they 
kill people just uh, in December. So this has informed basically uh, the, uh, a lot the consciousness uh, of the people. And then you have the African people with Raisi who lost uh, under Mobutu. It's a tiny event because most of Mobutu's forces have joined Brila. So you have Mobutu's uh, followers or Mobutu's uh, leaders working hand in hand with Kabila. And now you're going to have the sectarian Mobutu leaders working hand in hand. So it's a consolidation of our power of road to with leadership. Then you have one sect of the Akhenaten Mobutu which is hiding amongst the masses under the, uh, the banner of a struggle for the liberation of Congo. And they are influential uh, in a way that the mass understand what is going on uh, in the Congo. So we have a situation like never before where the African people uh, have exposed itself to a certain extent that it fails to surprises because they can only rely on a sector of African people which is rotten and despised by the people. And you have the African working class in the main cities who are prepared to fight, who in fact will not recognize uh, the leadership of, uh, of uh, the Chinese security because they see the Chinese security in alliance with Kabila as a betrayal. And you have manifestation, demonstrations taking place already outside Congo. And I've watched the news yet, it was stirring out around the Congo. So he gives a revolution, this gives the African people the Socialist Party a unique opportunity. Because this struggle now, uh, you will be free uh, from the influence of the UDPS because they expose themselves, uh, which works basically uh, in our favor. And uh, the struggle uh, for liberation uh, in the Congo is a struggle for the unification of Africa. Yes. So yeah. we have Zimbabwe, we have South Africa, we have Angola, we have Rwanda, we have Uganda, we have uh, Congo Brazzaville. Uh, just to name those few uh, objective realities, practice, basically you can't, you can't ignore it, you can't make a revolution if you don't take all those places, it doesn't make sense because they have one interest to make sure revolution has stopped in the Congo, they know it. So we have one interest is to make sure revolution spread everywhere in Africa, particularly in those countries which had immediate interest in the Congo. Uh, so your objective really the revolution in the Congo has to be united with the revolution in Zimbabwe and South Africa for those places. So we have really serious explanations to provide really campaign ways to build the uh, African Force International so that we can have a capacity to engage on the ground because people are going to be receptive to revolution. They're going to be receptive to African working class having their own organization and that the revolution uh, in the Congo is indeed the international revolution. I think we're going to win that battle. I have no doubt we're going to win it because the people are, I can't tell you how people are pleased. They are fed up of the new colonial brutality of the daily mass rape. Don't want to be talking about the looting, just the violence against the people. People are fed up. I don't want to respond to that. And uh, that's basically where we are. And imperialism is a way of that. If they intervene today, they finding, they're trying to find a way to keep the new colonial lead on the masses who are rising up, uh, looking for a viable uh, uh, alternative, which is African internationalist uh, alternative. So imperialism is the world of that. It's the way the institution is, is an uh, open space, uh, basically, uh, for, for the body uh, to work. So I know I've been a uh, you know, I've spoken quite a long time, so I'll stop you, Chairman. Uhuru, thank you, comrade. Do you, do you want to introduce that uh, first video that we wanted to show? From, uh, I think it revolves around, uh, 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 perhaps, I don't remember if it was the OAU or the AU, I think they call themselves the AU now, uh, uh, calling for a delay in releasing uh, the uh, determination about who won that election. There's stuff we have, I know video. Do, do you want to uh, introduce that? Do you have? Or should we just go ahead and put it on? Yeah, we can play, then we can uh, uh, speak about it. Okay, let's go ahead and put it. Can, can we play that video? It's an unusually strong stand. 
The African Union has called for Dear Congo's Constitutional Court to delay the proclamation of the election's final result. It says it will urgently send a delegation to the country to seek a way out of the post-electoral crisis. Cependant. Although the situation on the ground has fortunately remained generally calm so far, it remains highly worrying. To put it bluntly, serious doubts about the conformity of the proclaimed results persist and continue to haunt the minds of Congolese and their brothers and friends around the world. The provisional results of DR Congo's election gave the win to Félix Tshisekedi, the son of a renowned opposition politician. But his main rival, Martin Fayoulou, claims that he is the true winner and that a backroom deal was signed between the incumbent party and Tshisekedi's camp. He has lodged an appeal with the Constitutional Court. Thousands of electoral documents leaked to international media supported Fayoulou's claim. DR Congo rebutted the African Union statement on Friday, saying the Constitutional Court was independent. Well, so that's, uh, that's one of the videos, and um, I think that uh, what we should really understand is that everything we're looking at, uh, even uh, Kabila forced to have this election that just happened, is uh, a method by which uh, Congo and Africa could remain in the hands of the, of the colonizers, of the imperialists, as opposed to the people of, of Congo and Africa having possession of our own uh, resources, including political resources, in, including <coughs> uh, uh, self-determination. So, uh, Louise, did you want to come in on that video? And that, well, we have another video as well. Did you want to come in on that, or should we play the next one? Who are the comrade Louise? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? I can now. <clears throat> yeah. So that was uh, a, a vain, basically, uh, uh, effort by the EU uh, to manage, basically, uh, the situation. Because as we say, we have uh, the, the chairman of the EU. Uh, this is uh, Paul Kagame. And uh, Paul Kagame cannot take a decision in favor of the people or the truth. Uh, that's something you can't do. He has a stake in the Congo. Pogadami State, you know, the Rwandan State, depends on the resources uh, coming straight from Congo because he has been given uh, the role of, uh, of the police uh, for imperialism. They have armies uh, in Somali, army in Darfur, army in South Africa uh, Republic. And I saw the same thing for, uh, for Museveni. They're all... They have provided soldiers for uh, the United States in their uh, bid to control uh, the, uh, the wealth uh, of Africa. And uh, there is no way uh, he can, uh, he can uh, do anything uh, to shoot himself uh, in the foot. In fact, in an AU meeting, uh, the day before they announced that uh, Joseph Kabila must suspend the proclamation of, of the result, they had a, uh, a, a meeting. Uh, which included uh, ministers of different countries. After all, you know, uh, a certain time they couldn't agree, and uh, they asked all the ministers and all the delegates to leave the room. Only the African president stayed in that uh, room. Uh, that would include Kagame, Museveni, Ramaphosa, uh, the president of Ethiopia, and, uh, and other presidents. For five hours, they could not agree on what to do, and that's how they came with that statement. They say, "Okay, we ask you to be that." to suspend any proclamation of, of uh, the result. And also, the AU is against the revolution. He was born against the future of, uh, of uh, Africa. So nobody should have faith uh, in anything uh, coming from, uh, from uh, uh, the AU. So when I heard the AU is going to Kitasa, I knew the AU is not going to Kitasa to advance uh, the interests of the African workers, of the people. They can't do that. Uh, but the problem uh, they have now is that uh, yes, became open, uh, at least noticeable to the people, that the AU uh, had uh, a position uh, that uh, is not the same as uh, the position of uh, the EU, for example. Uh, the EU was saying, uh, you know, that uh, it's a fraud and things like that. 
and uh, the AU is then the AU uh, have a position first. Uh, uh, no, then the SADC. I forgot about the SADC. The AU has when they decide to suspend the result, that was in contradiction to the position of the SADC. SADC position was no foreign intervention uh, in the Congo. SADC. What and is that? What is SADC, Louise? SADC. South African. Yeah. Abort. That's the. Uh, the Southern Africa... Yeah, uh, the Southern the, uh, uh, organization of uh, the African people with UIC, which includes all the Southern African countries, South Africa, yeah, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, yeah, Angola, yeah. They, uh, Congo included. Yeah. Sure. So they they are clear. They are clear because we already know South Africa, Angola, and Zimbabwe are the key forces in that um, mm -hmm. so-called coalition called, uh, organization called SADC. They are in support of status quo because they have material interest in the Congo they are protecting. So they are opposed to anything that would disrupt that. But we know imperialism, white power, prefer Katumbi. Uh, Joseph Kabila has served them, and they think his time is over. They want to replace him because they have to deal with the possibility of the struggle of the people, which is real. And uh, so Sadek. Uh, opposed that position, and the AU pretended to say otherwise, but we, we knew that would not last long, and uh, that's why also Joseph Kabila went ahead, declared, proclaimed the result, because he knew he had the support of SADC, and this is also the Eastern uh, uh, African uh, uh, organization uh, in, a, in a great lake, lake region, they are also opposed to any foreign intervention. And guess who are members of it? Hmm. Uganda is a member, Kenya is a member, Rwanda is a member. So they all have it, direct interest, you know, so they do that. But when you see uh, the betrayal of all these organizations, because one thing people in the Congo are opposed to the regime of Kabila, apart from the massive killings, is what they call balkanization. They are opposed to balkanization. Uh, uh, of Congo. Which is dividing, dividing Congo them. up. Balkanization to divide yeah, Congo but, up. Yeah. Go ahead. They're opposed to that. That's the right. people are. Yes. They're opposed to that because they have seen what's going on in, in <clears throat> Sudan. The imperialism has intervened and it split Sudan. Yes. They created this so called South Sudan. Yes. And they're following the news that uh, Somali, they have Djibouti, they have Somaliland. They're trying to split, you know, carve up uh, Somali. People can see that. They've seen Libya with all these different, you know, tribes we've never even heard of. Yes. You know, uh, effort to partition Libya. They have seen that. And Nigeria, if it is Boko Haram, if when you look at it, it's an effort to partition Nigeria. They can see that. And Cameroon, there's this talk of English front versus Francophone. Yeah. It's a partition. <laughs> and they have, you have seen that. So there is a new sector that consider themselves like Congolese nationalists. They're opposed to any partition. They just oppose it. And they seek a bill. They say the more Kabila is in power, the more likely we're going to have a partition of Congo. So they are opposed different, definitely uh, uh, to that. So you, you begin to see uh, uh, all these uh, positions being uh, uh, basically uh, on the ground, and uh, that's why basically the AU is a set-up organization, is for the balkanization of Africa, because every balkanization that takes place is just a validation of the role played by, by the AU, because short of Africa making a revolution and being united and unified, what you're going to have is the opposite. So. For those, those Africans who are opposed to balkanization uh, in the Congo, they have to get on board with African internationalism because the response to, to the balkanization or to solve the balkanization is African internationalism because the unity of Congo is not viable, it's not possible if Africa is not united because imperialism with its nine borders in the Congo it means war on the Congo from nine borders. There is no doubt about it. I'll give one example. When Ibarra came to Congo, they got the support of uh, Tanzania with uh, Mwalimu uh, Nyerere. But after the AU uh, decided that uh, okay, now in the Congo, Shombe, who opposed Lumumba, was in talk with Mobutu, Kasaru, and the rest uh, for a new colonial solution. Finally, they can agree together against the possibility of revolution in Congo. The AU gave the position not to support uh, any uh, armed struggle, any revolutionary struggle in the Congo. And he nearly told the line. He withdrew his support for the revolution in the Congo, which he meant 
that Abu Gerard was coming back uh, to Tanzania after he decided to withdraw. He was met by that news that Nyerere was no longer in support of the struggle. Oh. And that's the position of the AU, historically. <clears throat> Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Hood, I think it's really important to mention that because uh, when you said that uh, the AU uh, is against revolution, there, there is a section of nationalists around, uh, around the world, and especially uh, in the U.S., and uh, I think it's also true in, in Europe, uh, England, uh, that talks about uh, uh, establishing another region of the AU, and somehow they think that's going to be progressive, and this region of the AU uh, would uh, give uh, Africans uh, in the United States or in what they call what they call the di diaspora an opportunity to participate uh, uh, in the AU, and for them that's a great thing. But I think it's important <coughs> to say this because uh, the organization of African unity itself uh, was something that was created, uh, fought for, uh, defined uh, by imperialism, by the U.S., uh, by the French, by the uh, by the British, and. Uh, it was a way to frustrate, to circumvent the efforts that were being made by Kwame Nkrumah to unify all Africans to create a single uh, African uh, government. Uh, and in fact, Nkrumah had, uh, a year after coming to power in, in Ghana, Nkrumah had called an All African uh, uh, People's Conference that occurred in Ghana. And some of the uh, uh, luminaries of the African Revolution attended that uh, that conference. I think Lumumba was there. Uh, yeah, he was there, in fact. Uh, and uh, there were others. Yeah, uh, was and, there. and he had, they had begun uh, to uh, this process. I think uh, Ghana, uh, uh, Mali, uh, Guinea uh, had begun this process of uh, creating a unified base to unify all of Africa. And uh, so the imperialists were extremely concerned about that. And there are documents that we've seen. Uh, that shows how the British uh, and others, uh, imperialist forces, did everything they can to block Nkrumah's efforts to build uh, a single uh, movement to have uh, uh, one African government. And, and uh, they are the ones who are responsible for the May 25th, 1963 determination uh, to consolidate this thing they call the Af uh, Organization of African Unity that, in fact, codified the borders, codified their colonial borders, codified the borders that were created in Berlin, Germany by imperialist white powers that, that split Africa up and uh, that, that gave, uh, 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 the, 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 gave uh, the power to this whole neo-colonial body of uh, African people, created a continental-wide neo-colonial organization that would frustrate the efforts of our people to win freedom. And the AU is simply the OAU without the O. And they have the same function. It's neo-colonialism writ, uh, writ large. And uh, I just think it's important for you to have brought that out, that they, that because there are many people who romanticize. At one juncture, our party even held up the OAU as this uh, uh, you know, grand advancement, uh, not even having recognized that the OAU, in, many, in, most, in, 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 in its essence, was a creature of uh, imperialism that was designed to keep Africans from being uh, consolidating uh, uh, our nation. Uhuru. Should uh, come yes, out, we, well, we uh, have, okay, just, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just quickly uh, on the AU, because the, the question of AU brings up the question of uh, revolutionary theory, and uh, the question of uh, Pan-Africanism as, uh, as a fraud, basically, because there are two uh, aspects here. First one, uh, most recent, when uh, Kabila, uh, the father, Lord Isri Kabila, and Museveni, Kagame, and the rest of them, when they uh, walked to Congo with their arm, with the armed groups, it was presented as an Afghanist uh, uh, event, achievement, unity of uh, all these uh, uh, leaders. And the poor, it was true, which, he, which was an opportunist uh, approach to come to power, because Lord Isri Kabila came to power with the United States, you know, hidden as the Rwandan army, as the Ugandan army, as uh, so-called an alliance for the liberation of Congo. That's how it was. And Angola uh, participated, and other state to Africa participated. But it was, above all, a United States project to remove Mobutu and to put a new leadership, which will do what uh, Mobutu could no longer do at the time. They need somebody who will open up uh, Congo uh, to exploitation we have uh, uh, today, all this mine. Uh, so the project we have basically today, they will have uh, to destroy the people who are state that was there at Mobutu, 
uh, we is a weaker state, which is the Kabila has, which means the UN has to be a part of that state, plus all these armed groups that are controlled uh, by you, uh, Museveni, by, uh, 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 by uh, I mean, so they created that situation, and that was a an Africanist project. Yes. Uh, as a response, basically, uh, by imperialism, the Africanist people were right there. It was basically from Lohane Zigabila and Kagame and Museveni as African leaders, that was opportunism. And that's, you know, today, the suffering is there in the Congo today. You have definitely to identify uh, this uh, opportunism. And uh, Pan Africanism is opportunism. Because if you go back to the 60s, when Lumumba organized a Pan Africanist conference in August 1960, that finally we're going to get, we're going to have a united position so we can get the version out, the imperialism out of Congo. All the Pan Africanist leaders backed off. Nobody supported Lumumba strongly. Uh, nobody came and said, listen, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take on the version. We're going to build it out on our army there. Uh, the response, the conclusion of the conference was that the Mumba need to reconcile with the other near colonialists. Yeah. And uh, not undermining, underestimating the uh, sincerity, the effort from Kwame Kuma, over it was undermined because he controlled his own state uh, to begin with. So that's an African in real action, historically, in the Congo, in the 60s, and today. And uh, that's why the AU is abroad, so is an African too. And the Congo, least historical reasons can show. You don't have to add anything to it. Uh -huh. it, it, it you know, is that for everyone to see? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. I think that's a really important comment, Louise. And uh, of course, uh, what we understand is that neocolonialism itself is the highest expression of uh, opportunism in the African revolutionary movement. And a handful of petty bourgeois Negroes uh, protecting their own uh, uh, situation, promoting their own situation, and that the neocolonial state, including Congo, uh, functions as an incubator for the ongoing reproduction of a social force, a traitor social force, uh, that will always betray our people, the masses of our people, and that will always serve uh, imperialist interests. And that brings us back to the real issue of the absolute necessity for Africa to have access to its own revolutionary party under the leadership of the African working class, a party of the advanced attachment, the party uh, that has uh, advanced revolutionary theory uh, and that, of course, is the African People's Socialist Party, uh, writ large, uh, called the African Socialist International that embraces uh, revolutionary uh, Africans around the world who uh, can unite with, adopt, adapt, uh, uh, adopt the, uh, the theory of African internationalism and the organizational principles of the African Socialist International. So um, I don't know if you, there's anything you want to say, Comrade Louise. Uh, our time is about up. If you want to say anything to to close this out? Uh, yeah, briefly, first of all, uh, because people see this question of Congo as a question of democracy, that's what we say. I see struggle for democracy. Yes, we agree. It's a for democracy, but it's, we go define it uh, more and more for people to be clear. It's a struggle for a different type of state, a black power state. That's what it is. And the African people really cannot do that kind of struggle. And that's why we are confident only the African working class can do it. And uh, that's what we believe in you know, our victory, uh, basically, in the Congo. The other thing is that uh, we are going to have an event on the 26th, Saturday, 2 p.m. in Brixton, and Chairman Omari Sierra will be there with Benny, uh, as the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Uh, I will be there uh, as well. So if you can't miss, if you are in London or in Europe, it's still too late. Get on a course if you're in France, other places in Europe, come to London. This is the event you can't miss, and we're going to talk about how to push our way forward, too. Uh, in the Congo as a part of the struggle the free and the unified the African nation. So look forward to see everyone. 336 Books and Rod in London, 2 p.m. That's where we're going to be. Uh, oh, thanks so much, Comrade Secretary General. This, that was Secretary General Louise Kinshasa. Uh, he is the uh, Secretary General of the African Socialist International, which is the uh, organization, the revolutionary worldwide organization of African People's Socialist Party. Uh, and in here in the United States, uh, I am the chair of the U.S. section of the African Socialist International, and I am the chair also of the uh, African Socialist International at large. And so I want to thank Comrade Secretary General Luizzi, and I want to alert everybody thank that you, we will be doing this uh, 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 weekly, uh, Uhuru Congo, 
uh, uh, YouTube, it's a YouTube uh, channel, Uhuru Congo. So every week we'll be doing this and we'll be building a, our audience and you should alert everybody to the fact that we are going to be doing this and people should be on the lookout for this. And of course, people can go to uh, uh, Uhuru Congo and look at the past uh, uh, discussions that we've had up to now. Uh, Africans who are interested and others who are uh, interested in joining uh, the African People's Socialist Party, wherever you're located, join with the comrades who are in South Africa, join with the comrades in Kenya and Ghana, uh, join with the comrades who are in France and the Bahamas and other places you're interested, you should uh, contact uh, African APSP Uhuru.org. That's APSP Uhuru.org. And I think there's an ASI. Is there an ASI Uhuru.org? That is ASI Uhuru.org. Go uh, to those sites and you can join. Uh, and, uh, and or uh, uh, give support uh, to the work that uh, we are doing uh, to liberate our Africa. And I want to thank everybody. I want to leave you uh, with the slogan, Israel to e Africa. Uh, Africa is ours. One Africa, one nation. Uhuru.